Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making groovy tech house drums inspired by Fisher's song, Waiting for Tonight. And we're going to find out if we can do this in under 30 minutes by using the 80-20 rule of tech house drums. What you're listening to right now is the song that we'll be working on. And what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on. In particular, we'll be focusing on this drum group right here, and we'll be going in order of how I built out every single layer so that you can follow along when you're making your own tech house drums. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we'll be doing a full recap of the 80-20 rule so that you can apply what you're learning here to your own music. Because all in all, it really only took about 30, maybe 40 minutes for me to recreate the drums here. And if we pull back and have a look at this whole tune, this was about six, maybe six and a half hours for me to complete this. Fully arranged, mixed, mastered, and ready to go. So if you want help finishing songs faster just like this, I've made you a free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one song like this every single week. Visit the link that's on screen now or in the description to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And if you want to take things to the next level, you can also find a link to this video's project files in the description as well. With that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So when it comes to the drums for this one, as usual, first thing is make sure you have a reference track in your uh, project file here. So we have Fisher and Jennifer Lopez's tune waiting for tonight up in here. It's turned off and I've set it up so when I press the S key, I can flick back and forth between what we're working on and the actual tune. So we can select the right samples, make sure the notes are hitting correctly and set the right volume. That's kind of going to be the, the trick there. So what I did for this one is the kind of standard kick trick that I've been doing for the last little while. So the nice thing is when you get a, a tune that has the extended mix, um, what you want to do is find an area in the tune where like just the drums are playing. So over back in here, we have the drum outro right here. And so what I did is I have a couple slices here. So I found this little slice right here. And then what I did was I consolidated it with command J or control J. So it's just one sample. And then once you do something like this, uh, what you can do is right click it and then press show in uh, browser and it'll show the click there. And when you press this little show similar sound button, it's gonna show you all the, the kick sounds that are similar to this original kick sound. Uh, so you can then have something similar that sounds something similar to the original tune, but it's one of your own samples, it's a high quality sample. So it's a nice way to kind of steal the kick from, from a track without having to um, actually like steal it from the kick and have like maybe the hi-hats coming through it and all that kind of stuff. So with doing this trick, I ended up with two kick sounds that I liked, both from uh, Rocket Powered Sound. So I have one that is kind of doing more of the high end, if you have a listen here. Very subtle. And another that's doing like, it's the main kick really. So just added two because I felt like adding two. Uh, I felt like it, it worked. Uh, a good thing to do is when you're building your drums, build them out actually over like say over here. So if we bring the loop over here, now we can flip back and forth and try to get ours to sound similar in sound and volume to the track that's in the reference. So I feel like ours could sound a little thicker. So something that I might do here is I have this drum bus and I can increase the boom amount. Something like that. So other than that, the, let's have a quick look at the pattern. So just the four on the floor. I have it on two because I have two samples playing. Other than that, what we're doing is I've removed a bunch of the highs on that higher end kind of clicky bit of the kick at around whatever this would be. 900 hertz or so and then the, this other one is just playing fully uh, and then that we're running into the standard kind of like little channel strip that i run into so we have a transient designer here we're pulling back the sustain a bit to tighten up the kick a little bit and what this is is the free kill arts transient shaper i've just mapped the core like knobs to an ableton rack just to make it simpler and easier to use and then i've been really loving using drum bus in the last little bit particularly because you can add in this boom function um, and then you can set it to the key of the song if you'd like, um, or like have it playing a note that's in the scale, which is also a good idea. Sometimes it's not the best if it's playing the exact same note as uh, say the bass is playing. I, there could be like kind of frequency overlap and that kind of stuff that makes it sound like crap. Um, but like, for example, off and on, off and on. 
adds a lot of like fullness and body. There's probably a little volume there. So again, when you're going through the internet, looking at like YouTube tutorials, if someone shows you something and like, like, oh, look at this cool new plugin and the volume is louder when they turn it on, the volume loudness is going to be that thing that's going to actually be making you think that it sounds better. So be careful with that. Um, other than that, that's a good look at the kick. And the main thing is to flick back and forth, trying to get the volumes correct. With that similar sound search feature that we showed here, it's pretty easy to get a similar sound. Uh, and then it's all about the volume. Flicking back and forth in context, almost in time. So you can almost hear your kick as if it was in like part of that tune. Uh, the next element that I added was this open hat. So let's have a look and listen to that. And let's have a listen to the reference. This has an open hat. So let's actually listen to this. Figure back and forth. I feel like I actually like picked almost a tint, which is kind of cool. It sounds so similar. And um, one of the ways that I was able to do that was uh, similar to the kick trick. I went in over here uh, and found a, an isolated part of where the, the, the open hi-hat's playing by itself, uh, consolidated it, did the show in browser trick, then clicked the show similar sounds, and then went through these and ended up finding something that sounded similar. Uh, so let's have a look at what I ended up with uh, right over here. Let's bring that open hat loud back here. Uh, so what I ended up with is a layer of three samples. Uh, so one is this sound here, which is a big part of it. It's kind of the main element of it. Then we have this sound here, which is very slight addition to it. And then this, I actually brought in the actual uh, sample into my DAW here. So this is from the actual song. And I just have this little rack that I made here where I'm able to quickly adjust like the filter frequency, adjust the filter to envelope frequency, which helps to kind of like isolate the sound a little bit more, um, particularly when you're extracting the kick, which is kind of nice, but everything's just all in one area here. Qu quickly adjust some knobs and kind of isolate the sound altogether. It sounds like this. Main core sounds this. Uh, tightened up the end of the loop so that it's getting more of like a tighter sound if you listen to the reference. It's fairly tight sound. Um, and I did, believe I did that for almost all of them. This one, I just adjusted the, what is it? The release or the decay. And then on this one, nothing too much going on there. But this was a layer of three different sounds. Uh, also on this, there's this part here. So look where I've just removed that like louder, more full open hat sound. And this is more of an arrangement trick. There's parts of the song where the open hi hat isn't as loud and proud playing through basically. And that's what uh, what this is, this part's here for. Um, the other than that, running into the China standard channel strip that I run into, which is usually EQ, transient shaping, sidechain, and saturation. Uh, so have a look. So first thing is removing a bunch of the lows here. Kind of standard thing that I usually do on almost every single track other than like the kick in the bass. So that it makes room for the kick in the bass. Um, so we're moving everything under 300 hertz, ducking a little bit at 800. I guess I thought it sounded like shit or something like that. So remove something there. I don't usually do surgically EQ, to be honest. It's more about just finding the right sample and moving on. Uh, then we're running into that transient shaper again, tightening up the sustain once again to get that tighter, nicer sound. With drums, I feel like controlling the sustain is a pretty important, awesome thing to be focusing on. Then we're running in into this saturation. So this is just Ableton Saturator. Uh, that wasn't what I wanted to click. It's just Ableton Saturator here. Again, just with the main knob not mapped here so that I'm not getting you know, confused by the, the, the user interface and admiring it and then not actually making any moves. This way, you just quickly make your move and move on while you're making your tracks. And adding a little bit of width with this one knob wider plugin from Polyverse, which is pretty freaking sweet. And just again, it's a free plugin, just mapped all the knobs to an Ableton rack to make things quick and easy and ready to go. Other than that, the next thing that I moved on to was the closed hi-hat. So let's have a look and listen to that. Let's have a look at the MIDI as well. And for this, flicking back, you can hear it, they're like, it's kind of like shuffling. It's a cool little groove that's, that's added there with, I believe it's like a shaker and a hat. So I tried to emulate it with both. I feel like I didn't nail this part as well as I'd like to, but it's close. So 
So basically, this was just flicking back and forth between the reference track and this to try, try to figure out the the right pattern. Uh, and once I had it, it ended up like this. And then moving on the and then the sound design. I just I have already had a rack with like all these different um, uh, hats in here that I like, and I set it up so there's this little selector so I can switch through them as I'm flicking back and forth between the reference and what I have going. So I can use the selector to quickly switch through, find the right sound, and then move on. And then other than that kind of standard channel strip stuff, I got rid of a ton of the of the lows. There's already quite a bit taken away because uh, it's kind of sound like a very crisp and high endy kind of hi-hat. Uh, then we remove some of the, the sustain to tighten up that sound a little bit, a little bit of saturation again, which saturation usually using it to fill out the sound a little bit, add a little bit of like those harmonics and they can also can make it sound full and a little kind of gritty and cool. Next up is the shaker. Let's have a look and listen to this. Let's solo it too, because it looks complicated. So it's doing a similar pattern to this hi-hat. So let's add these together. And basically just what I did is I found, I think it's for all, these are mostly from larger shaker loops. So I found like shaker loops that sounded sick, but I wanted to just kind of try to get that cool little groove that's going on. So I really just wanted like one of the of the shaker hits um, so that I can like play it in. And it's kind of doing that similar like little skippy, skippy little bit kind of following along with the hi-hat. A couple different layers that are going on. Um, and that's kind of a look at that in context. And then listen to reference. Uh, and then moving on, having a look at any processing here, just removing some of the lows, really not doing too much. It's already quite gone in a lot of these shakers. So that's kind of all good to go. The next thing I added in was a shaker loop to kind of fill it out a bit more. As you can kind of hear in there. A bit more sparse. This is adding a bit maybe too much energy, but I thought it sounded cool. And this was also a good opportunity to start changing up a little bit so it's not like a super duper carbon copy. In terms of any processing here, we're just removing a bit of the lows, but that's not really doing much. You can see the sample or the loop here doesn't really have much going on there anyways. A little bit of sidechain, one up sidechain. I, the way I do it is I have this Ableton Shaper device with this like nice little curve. It's set to quarter notes, which is what the kick is doing. And it's just ducking a gain on the on an Ableton utility. Uh, that way it's doing a similar effect to sidechain, but you don't have to open up a compressor and route it to the kick each and every time. It's just one knob, you can dial it in and move on. Other than that, a little bit of Ableton saturation to fill up the sound a little bit. And I ran it into a K clip. I think it was just, it was going above zero. So I wanted to toss some, um, a clipper on top to make sure it's not going above zero and having kind of digital clipping distortion, which can sometimes sound bad. In this case, I just wanted to control a little bit. So this was if, just for more, I guess, perspective. This over here was going above the zero amount here. So I was trying to just uh, control that with a clipper. And let's have a look at, I think one of the fine, no, there's still quite a few cool, cool things going on. So then I felt like, I guess when I was listening to this, the hats are very interesting and really driving the tune. So I decided to go with those first when building this one out. Uh, and then I got into like the claps. So let's have a look and listen to the clap. So what we got going on here is in terms of the pattern, it's on the standard like two and four, like most claps and snares. Again, similar thing. I was flicking back and forth between the song. And just trying to find a bunch of different uh, clap sounds that were similar with claps. A good, like a good thing to usually do is have two different sounding claps and you pan one a little bit to the left or a lot bit to the left and one a bit to the right or a lot bit to the right. It creates a nice cool like stereo sound and it sounds like sick and awesome basically. Um, just look at that and then in any uh, processing you're just moving to the lows, shelving out and a low passing a bit of the high, kind of nestle it in a little bit and just a little bit of saturation to fill up the sound. Uh, main thing here again is really the volumes. That's why there's not that much processing. If you find good sounds and you're playing in the in the correct notes and stuff like that, or really just find the right sounds and set the right levels, then you're pretty much 80% of the way there, which is kind of nice. Uh, so next up, I like to usually fill out the, these out with a snare. So I added this in. Probably very hard to tell, so I'll turn up the volume.
and that's, I don't know if it's really in the tune. Sounds like it's mostly claps, to be honest. But I usually like to have something like claps left and right, and then a snare down the middle. Uh, it's going on the same pattern. It's kind of like two on the, on the two and four of each bar there. And then um, basically just went through a bunch of different snare sounds that I had and landed on this. And then like, I don't think there's actually, okay, there's some processing. We're moving a little bit low, so it's making room for the kick in the bass. And that's really, really it. Next up is an interesting, fun part, which is the Congo bit. So, uh, or Congo or bongos or whatever you want to say. So let me turn it on. Let's have a listen to it. And let's listen to the reference. Basically what I did is I just looked up kind of like Congo bongo kind of tribal stuff um, on Splice. Found something that sounded kind of similar, and then I just cut up that, chopped it up a bit, and moved it into areas that were similar to the reference track to get like a similar vibe. Um, and then some processing, removing some of the lows, shelving out some of the highs, but also low, low passing some of the highs just to try to like nestle it in. It was just quite like a tonal. Sounds sick, full too, to be honest, but trying to like just nestle it in to the rest of the drums a little bit uh, in the exact same way that we're bringing up the attacks with like the. the the um, transients are hitting a little bit harder. The main thing is that we're using the transient shaper here to reduct some of the sustain. So that it, it's a nice way to help it blend into the track and sound like a little bit more minimal and awesome. I'm running into a sound choice effect track using the pan man to just do this little bit of movement. So the Congos are moving a little bit, which I, I like to do. And then I did add in was the shifter device from Ableton. And I dropped it by 12 semitones or an octave and just blended in the dry and wet a little bit subtle adds a little bit of like thickness and body to it I would say but then that main thing is like the volumes really that's really the main thing again uh, then what I like to add on usually is some kind of like a break so I added on this this loop here turn it up and solo it So usually something I like to do is build up the core sounds like this, kick, open hats, hots, um, clap, snare, the core sounds using your one shots, and then layer in some kind of break or top loop, which is a nice way to add some character and complexity in a subtle way, because usually these breaks have like more like fills and little like little bits of character uh, into them. And it's a nice way to blend it into the rest of your core sounds to make it sound like fuller and cooler and more, you know, dynamic and interesting. So just found this house break on Splice. Uh, I did the little trick where you set the transients uh, here and you change it to the right arrow and you can dial back the transients, which is another way to tighten up the sound to help it blend in with those core sounds. Um, other than that, removing a bunch of the lows, trying to get rid of like the kick and any of that low end information so that our low end information is what's really important there. Like our kick is nice and loud, taking up all that low end, same with our bass. Uh, and then transit designer, tightening it up even more so with the sustain, a little bit of side chain for like pumping, making room for the kick, a little bit of saturation, fill up sound a little bit, and a little bit of width here again to make things a little bit more stereo, push things left and right. Uh, and then what do we have? A couple last little bits that I added in was like in the reference, I feel like I could hear like more little like little bits in the high end. Um, so I added this little little vinyl bit. Solo it for a second. I looked up like vinyl hi hat and got like and then just used the same pattern as before. So that way it's just adding a little bit of like kind of crispiness in the high end, which I thought sounded kind of cool. Uh, so, uh, moved a whole bunch of the lows to make sure that it's just that high end. Removed the attack a little bit so that way it's the other hi-hat is taking care of the main transient and this is a little softer. A uh, little bit of saturation to fill up the sound. And one other thing I did add in some of these over here was I added like these rides. Super subtle, so I'll solo it. Same thing kind of following that little ta 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 little bit of like that we originally brought in with that hi-hat. So there's another way to add in a little tiny bit of, of high end. Not sure how much how effective this stuff really is, but I added another one here. Let's have a listen. Just a, a, a ride sound. It sounded like there was like some kind of little high end sprinkling going on in the main track. So I wanted to try to emulate that basically. 
But yeah, so that's a look at the drums for this one. It was pretty fun to make, particularly some of the combo vibes uh, that I really like adding in there. Um, that said, let's jump into the 80-20 rule to do a nice recap of all everything we learned here uh, of the drums so you can apply it to your own tunes. Before we move on to that, I want to also mention that big shout out to our friends over at Rocket Powered Sound for sponsoring this video. They hooked up the two kick drums that you're hearing in this tune, uh, and it's from their ultimate sample pack, which is a really badass sample pack filled with over a thousand different samples, uh, really iconic stuff that's really usable in a lot of different productions. If you want to check it out, there is a 30% off code on screen now. Just use the code Ultimate Best Friends Club. It's a link on screen now and in the description if you want to check it out. And also, if you grab the project files for this one, you'll also get access to the Rocket Powered Sounds kicks and samples and everything that they were so uh, nice to give us um, for this project. So you can also grab that as well. So big shout out to them. And with that said, let's jump into the 80-20 rule for this one. Hi, my friend, Matt from Best Friends Club here. And if you've been paying attention, then you probably figured out what the 80-20 rule is when it comes to building out your drums. The goal here is to get 80% of the results with only 20% of the time, energy, or effort. And because the first key to the 80-20 rule for drums is to use a reference track, we're making sure that we're effortlessly hitting 80% of a very professional sounding track. In particular, we focus on nailing the pattern, sound selection, and the volume compared to the reference track so that we keep things fast and focused as we're building out our drums. The second key of the 80-20 rule here is to mix as you go in an extremely streamlined way by only focusing on the volume as well as a simple repeatable channel strip for each track that we're adding to our drums. The third and final key is to repurpose your old project files and to build up a suite of powerful templates, Ableton racks, and one knob effects that you've personalized and curated over time. If you'd like to get a head start by downloading all the racks, templates, and all the files that you've seen me use in the Ableton project file for this video, or if you'd just like to take a closer look at any of the techniques or tracks you saw me work on in this video at your own pace, you can find a link to this video's project files on screen now and at the second link that's in the YouTube description. I'm recreating a different song from the Beatport top charts every single week and making the project files available to anyone who wants them. You'll also get access to a private Discord where you can ask me and the community questions as well as shared tracks for feedback. If you or your music are not quite ready for a shot in the arm like that, I've also made you a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that have helped me figure out how to completely finish one new song each and every single week. And you can grab that free ultimate song finishing toolkit by visiting the first link that's in the YouTube description here. However, if you just feel like staying on YouTube for now, that's totally fine. Save that link for later and check out this playlist of videos where I remake drums from other songs from the beatwork top charts. Or if you want to take what you learned in this video to the next level, definitely check out this video right here.